This episode of Fermented Adventure, the podcast, features the Cider Johns, Jasmine Mason and Ashley Johnson. We had a refreshing and entertaining conversation about cider and cider culture. Don't hesitate to reach out to Ashley and Jasmine and let them know what you thought about the podcast. Cheers! Ladies and gentlemen, craft spirit enthusiasts, and those interested in the intoxicating world of craft distilleries, cideries, meaderies, wineries, and the occasional foray into breweries. It's Rich Shane, and welcome to Fermented Adventure, the podcast, where we bring you the fascinating people that are making the mash, fermenting, distilling, bottling, pouring, and delivering to you some of the finest libations in the world. Before we get started, here are a few housekeeping items. Thank you for bringing the podcast into wherever you are and whatever you're doing. We truly are grateful that you've chosen to listen and make us part of your day. It would mean the world to us if you left a five-star review. This helps us climb in the rankings and it makes it easier for others to find us. Don't hesitate to leave us your comments as well. If the podcast didn't meet your expectations, tell us why. We're always striving to improve. You can find us at fermentedadventure.com. We are on Instagram and Facebook as Fermented Adventure. Email us at fermentedadventure at gmail.com. All right, FA Nation, let's meet our guest. She's Jasmine Mason. She's Ashley Johnson. I'm Rich Shane, and this is Fermented Adventure, the podcast. Ladies, welcome to the podcast. Thank, Thank you for having us. <laughs> I, I, we met at CiderCon in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And these two ladies are there, the Cider Johns. Okay, for those that don't know, who are the Cider Johns? What is what is the Cider Johns? Oh, throw it to me, right? So we <laughs> are two friends. Uh, we met in college. We went to St. Joe's together. And so we are the Cider Johns. We started a social media page after going to port -a -Core in, what, 2016? 17, 2018? Something like that. Something like that around there. We went to yeah. the core, which is like a, a cider fest that had, that was happening. Um, that I believe that they do different dates around the country, but we obviously went to the one that was in Philly by the Navy Yard. Um, and after leaving there, it felt like, oh, this is cool. Like there weren't a lot of, um, there were people of color, Black people specifically, that were like in attendance, but not any that were pouring or, you know, that owned, you know, cider companies and had a presence there. So we're like, oh, like, we can homebrew, like, let's just try this out. And so we just kind of started to do that. And, Ooh. you know, after the pandemic um, and not being able to get like, you know, to the farms to get juice, we just, you know, started a social media page to kind of showcase, you know, this other ciders that we were drinking. And it kind of just has evolved from there. <laughs> Well, here's what I know about the Cider Johns right now. And and thank you, Jasmine, for that. You're just very concise. You told the whole story. We can wrap up. Thanks for being on the podcast today. <laughs> All right. You, you said a lot. All right. So you went to Pour the Core. Yes. This was really the first time that for you both together, was this the first time you were experiencing cider or just these different types of ciders on this kind of level? No, we already drank cider. It was right. really like, so that's kind of our thing. We like, we're boozy buddies. So we <laughs> do boozy things. We've been doing boozy things since college. And it was one of those things where I think we probably saw it on like Eventbrite or something. And it's like, oh, mm -hmm. we're cool. cider, it's like 20 bucks. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Might've got it off Groupon, I think. Right. Um, I think so. <laughs> And so that's kind of what it was like. We, there was already the interest there because um, we had done like margarita merches and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, the interest was already there. And it wasn't until you're there and you're like talking to people and drinking. It's like, yo, we love cider. And, you know, the, talking about like the process and realizing like, oh, we can. I mean, I probably shouldn't say this, but I guess we had a couple that were like, we could make better cider than this. Um and well, so you're not naming them. You're just saying, hey, I yeah. think this is something we could do and make it our own and mm -hmm. we would enjoy it more, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah. I think maybe within, what, a week or two of that, we were going to the farms and getting apples, being very ambitious. To very. Our own <laughs> apples. Like, we could have just bought juice and fermented it, but no, 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 no. We needed to make our own blend. <laughs> um, which we did. <laughs> I wish there was some sort of recording device 
where that was happening, where you were pressing your own apples and just the uh, just that conversation of, you know, we could have gotten juice if we wanted to. Right. We could have. I have like one picture of you at your counter. Right. <laughs> juicing. Like juicing. We're ju- juicing. And I needed to take a break because I was tired. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, and we were like dropping apples in the hallways. Yes. We had like a wagon. <laughs> we had a wagon that we took from the car up to her apartment and it was full of apples. The guy that works at her front desk was like, what are y'all doing? Like, we are <laughs> pressing apples today. Um, how many bushels of, I mean, how much production are we are we talking about right now for this first oh run? Oh gosh. It was that was. Small, was it? Because we had a, how big was our like thing? Was it like five? We had around five, like 15, or? like 15 bushels of apples because it was like a bunch of different ones. We went to different uh, orchards too. So it was a lot for my little apartment (laughs) and for us to be pressing ourselves so um like the next day we were like our back hurt and everything else we were like what were we thinking like but like right (laughs) yeah that was intense we felt like and we knew then that part was not for us no we did it a cup like it was that very short window of time we're, yeah. we're making our own blend. We uh, low key made applesauce. Um, I'm like, the starter thing don't work out. We can give Mods a run for their money. Applesauce, let's do it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Do so, you yeah, remember definitely. how many bottles that production uh, generated for you? Ooh. So, we actually had around like nine. We had nine bottles and then we also had like jars too. And I'm trying to um, think. We were definitely. We, <laughs> right. So, so you're, you're bootlegging, um, yes. you're bootlegging right. cider at this point, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. We, were, we were putting that cider. Yeah. We I get it. Cider into any container we could disinfect and had a lid. So. <laughs> how did you, time. how did you determine your recipe? You know, where did you learn that from? Or where did you discover that part? We had an Excel sheet. Yes. Okay. So we took a course. So we did take a course um, with Hale and Drill. They do um, like a cider making course. Um, And so between that course and having them kind of lay out a very like basic bare bones, because I'm sure that they're, and they said this, they like the process that they use is just a little bit more scaled up from what they gave us. And so, but it was, it's a really good, like basic bare bones. These are the steps that you have to follow. Obviously, as you get better at it, you can add, you know, different things, but we had that. YouTube university, because we definitely, because by the time we got to hail and true, we were like, Oh, we did this. Or we saw where we went wrong (laughs) or what we did right once Uh we got to their class. So we had started already like um, cider making at my apartment prior to going to Hill and True. Mm -hmm. And so by the time we got there, we were like, oh, this worked, that works. Um, But yeah, we use like Excel Mm -hmm. sheets and played with different things. It was just really trial and error. (laughs) And just a little bit of like beginner's luck, because I think the first time we did it, it was good and then it's like considering what we've tasted right because right. initially I thought it was trash I did not like it I was she like mm, we this is horrible this that is also not good because it it's like well, what are we doing wrong let's take wrong it. right <laughs> and so but then that's because we were making a dry cider and not realizing that that's what we were doing we we're coming from this mm-hmm. cider fest where everything was sweet and that's yes. our only experience with cider at that point was sweet. So yes. um, it wasn't until, right, we took the hail and, and true it was, it was still, class. It was, we like carbonated and we were struggling right. with the carbonation, which is not an easy thing to do when you're at home and not like properly measuring things. And so it was just like, oh, we're not doing anything wrong, actually. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. I love the adventure that you mm-hmm. set out on. And... Yes. For both of you, it's it's almost like that there's a banner of, you know, at your production, you know, area, wherever that space is, your apartment that says, look, go big or go home. We're mm-hmm. going to go get 15 bushels of apples. <laughs> We're going to spend, how long did it take you to press 15 bushels of apples? 
at least two days. Too long. Two days. <laughs> too long. <laughs> so the sun's going up, the sun's like coming it. down, the sun's going up, the sun's coming down, no, and you legit, finish your last we apple. We were together the entire day. Day. <laughs> the farms. Then we get back. I thought we got back at a reasonable time, but then we we did we even start? We didn't even start because I think I had to come back because then right. we. We you didn't like, leave oh, until like two, three o'clock in the morning, like, like one day. Morning, everything was done and we like pasteurized. Like it was. <laughs> we were trying. There literally a lot of trial and error. Literally yeah, looking at our YouTube thermometer thing, what's the going world. on. Right. I don't know what we were doing, but yeah. There was a lot of th- <laughs> different things that we tried. <laughs> Through yeah. that whole period of you pressing apples and pasteurizing and <laughs> fermenting where did the name come into play for your company for the cider jones yeah so that came from once we pandemic hits and Mm -hmm. you know we're not really like home brewing anymore but we're still drinking cider and we still kind of want to like you know immerse ourselves within the cider community it's like oh well let's start a social media page where we can kind of highlight some of the ciders that we are drinking and the places that we are going that have cider on tap and um It was just easy because I'm from Philly. Ashley's been living in Philly for a while. John is a very, you know, what is it? A colloquialism? That's the word. It's a slang term. It's a Philly slang term. Mm -hmm. Uh, It just made sense. We decided John's. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, we had to pivot from being able to make cider (laughs) to then not being able to make cider just because of accessibility to the apples during that because that's what we thought we had to do at that time so Mm -hmm. um yeah jasmine came up with the name and we kind of started our social media and right and then once we realized like we there are not a lot of people that look like us right so maybe we can try to get other folks that look like us interested in cider right and then also yeah I mean we did a tasting one time and um we invited friends who are not cider drinkers or beer drinkers but they came you know to be supportive and by the time that they left they were like oh we actually did enjoy this cider or Mm -hmm. or this beer so um we just want our community to um be more immersed into the cider culture or brew culture just because we enjoy it right so yep. and we want to see others that look like us too so mm-hmm. so That's essentially really- for cider johns you're you're running on two tracks mm-hmm. one you're producing your and and you're you know providing your own cider mm-hmm. and the other you're on a mission to share this beverage that you love that you enjoy and bring people from the community into mm-hmm. this space and yeah. one of the things that always resonates with me, you know, not you know, one of the things that has now resonated with me attending CiderCon and, you know, speaking to people with the American Cider Association is this this desire, this focus, this laser like focus on inclusion and mm-hmm. wanting to expand. And here's what I love about it. It expands the conversation. Because you, me, them, we, we all bring our mm-hmm. perspectives into this, our, yep. you know, just what we enjoy, what we like, our yep. experiences. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think it's mutually beneficial, right? For everyone. Yeah. Um, so like, it will broaden the market for the cider industry, right? Um mm-hmm. So I think it's definitely beneficial for the cider industry to be more inclusive. Um, and then also like, we want our community to know that cider is, has a, there's a vast um, variety within yes. it. And so it's not just like, we had to go on that journey of, you know, starting from sweet to now we like dry ciders and, um, everything in between so we want them to know that just like wine people like wine like and people like beer like we we also want them to know that hey you can also like cider the same way so um yeah, yeah it's just a uh, educational i guess it is <laughs> for it's everyone fun. well they're like oh i don't like cider i don't like angry orchard and it's like okay that's fine but there's so many other brands if this is too sweet for you or you don't like this flavor profile or maybe you mm-hmm. like other um 
flavors that you're not seeing like right so <clears throat> like she said it's just it's a such a wide array of things within this industry that people I don't think people realize um and I feel like we can tap in there are so many different things that Jasmine and I want to do yeah um within like cider and brew like yep and it's because it's such an untapped market right so mm-hmm. um whether we have to be the ones to, you know, start it all, that's fine. You know, and not even just us, like there's maybe a handful of us. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I I think that compared to the rest of the cider industry, right. Like, I feel like we have a handful of us, I guess, trying to make, make way. And just like when we had our uh, panel, what is a seat at the table? Like, right. Yeah. And we had like um, other black cider influencers there and that they were women too, as well. So Mm -hmm. um, just showing that we're here, right? We, we want a seat. We want to build our own table. We are absolutely right. We want to build our own table. but We also want to have a seat at the table too, as well. So, yeah. Ashley, you said something about, you know, starting the conversation. I think the conversation has been started really Mm -hmm. for the two of you. What you're doing is you're turning the gas up on the conversation. Oh, I like that. <laughs> that's what I perceive. And so, you know, I had a conversation with Eleanor Leger of Eden Ciders. And yeah. what mm-hmm. resonated for me and Dawn and what we left CiderCon with was this was this idea of why not cider? Now, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then there seems to be the parallel to that. Somebody might say, why cider? You know, but right. when you go to a restaurant and you go out to eat um, or you go to a, a, you know, one of your favorite stores to pick up, let's say cider, mm-hmm. you may not see a vast array. And right. if you do, you may mm-hmm. see just a couple of things, but they don't know how to describe it. They don't know how right. to explain it like they would with wine. So yep. Yep. You, you're almost introducing something where somebody said, I don't like, you know, as, as you said, Jasmine, I, I don't like Angry Orchard. Mm-hmm. But why not try these other varieties mm-hmm. these expressions so as you talk to people and as you you have fallen in love with cider mm-hmm. how do you get you know what's what do you think because you're you're really making this a conversation how do you bring people into this conversation to say oh yeah you know what i want to know more about cider i i yeah. want to have that really relationship you know not to say that they're going to go out and pick up 15 bushels of apples <laughs> right <laughs> right they are going to say i'm going to go to port of the core And I'm going to try all these and, or I'm going to try more, or, you know what, when we're out to dinner, I want to know that there's a a cider on the menu. I want to find something different. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. I am. And some, one thing that we always say is um, cider is so versatile that like it can be as casual as going to a game and doing a side uh you know and cracking open a cider it can also be as sophisticated as champagne if you want it to be um and I just feel like there's a cider for every occasion and I try to just challenge the people around me I know Ashley does the same where you just try to challenge the people around you to kind of just like pay attention because sometimes they just might miss it um or you go into a restaurant thinking you want a cocktail because we're like really mm-hmm. also into pairing and so because like wine cider is pairs well with lots of different foods um and so I try to just challenge the people around me to like hey listen like if you're on a menu just you know check out the beer slash cider section sometimes it's behind the cocktail sometimes it's behind and under the wine but like look at the full menu and see what they have and if they don't have anything ask for a sample you might not like it and that's okay but at least you try um I actually maybe like two weeks ago I had a friend of mine she's not really the biggest cider drinker but she came to our tasting and she's like oh it wasn't that bad which to me is a win if you take somebody from I don't like this to oh it actually wasn't that bad you're winning and she sent me this pom I can't remember the name of the the company um but it was like a pomegranate cider and she was like this was really good she was at brunch and I'm like see one one person at a time um just getting them to kind of just like open their minds to, you know, maybe have a sparkling cider instead of sparkling champagne with your mimosa at brunch later. And then just engaging, right. Engaging with folks different ways. And so I think that, right. I think that that's what Jasmine and I try to like brainstorm with um, 
the folks over at ACA and, you know, mm-hmm. Cider Institute, like just trying to figure out new ways to engage people um, and bring them into cider. So yep. challenge their thinking. Yeah. They don't like it. Well, why not? Oh, uh, because it tastes like this. And it's like, well, have you tried this? Like offer alternatives. It's really or tasty. just putting cider in um, different putting them on different platforms like so that people have more access to them right so because I think that that's another thing so um going to like I go to a Sixers game I went and I asked for a site they actually had a cider so I'm like oh hey great (laughs) um just things like that I feel like out of all the you know beers or cocktails that you could have at a game there was at least one cider and no it Mm -hmm. wasn't one of the um the big ones right that you would typically think of but it was someone I was familiar with so it was just kind of like oh great Mm -hmm. so um I was glad to see that I just want to see more of that Mm -hmm. and so just like having more like cider events and um which I I love that we have like uh cider week here in Philly um because you know there's cider events all all throughout the city and um people now are more aware of like the different cideries that we have here because we do have a handful of cideries too in Philadelphia too so it's just like Mm -hmm. and that is that is a good thing in itself right to just have like cideries there because people are clearly patronizing these these uh establishments so um I think that right and then of course like Jasmine said with the pairing with the food I think like if you pair a good um meal with the cider that'll also bring people in like you just have to find new and different ways to draw people into cider Um, and you may not start initially with because not everybody's a cider drinker so you may not start with them initially wanting to drink a cider but you just have to find different and new ways to and that may just be like the marketing it is I call it the gateway cider. Everybody has a gateway cider that opens up their palate to more cider. And you just have to find people's gateway cider. It's It can take time, but it can get there. Well, we met and you were doing the bottle share. So yes. that was our gateway to Cider John's. And yeah. all right, so... You, we spoke about, you know, right, 2017, 2018, you started making some cider. Where is Cider John's today as you've continued to experiment and work with and get better with making cider? Still doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's a never ending process, right? No, it really it is. isn't. And um, even at uh, CiderCon, we met someone where we're discussing, you know, um, getting more equipment for us and expanding. And we're discussing um, even getting a space with someone here in Philadelphia as well. So just trying to upscale and bring things together. I, so Jasmine and I go back and forth because she's always like, let's do this. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. We have to hold on make sure we cross all our T's and dot our I's. And so we don't. it's just a, um, <laughs> that whole part of it of um, we want to make sure that we do this right. That's all. Um, and do it the right the right way and I I get it people start uh, fall fail get up but I just would rather do it (laughs) right the first time (laughs) right the first time so we don't have to do all of that but yeah and we have a whole lot of um a whole lot of support from other people in the cider industry too so I think that that has been very helpful for us and along our journey. But yeah, so we're still experimenting for sure. Um yeah, that's really we wanted to do more events. Um yeah. To your point about like expanding other people's, you know, exposure to cider um and stuff like that. And so um yeah, and just wanting to be more involved with ACA and being on, you know, we liked doing the panel, the seat at the, seat at the table panel with the other Black women insider. And so just like more of that, maybe, you know, looking for more like leadership type roles. So Listen, can- Jasmine and I have uh, so many different ideas it's outside ridiculous. of just making cider, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because now that we see like all of these opportunities, because we do see, we recognize the gaps here, right? We're like, oh, well, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, but it's like one thing at a time, right? So, um, right, we're working on some events 
and then also maybe uh, another collaboration and then also um just like our own cider getting our own stuff like like I said with mm-hmm. the space and the equipment and stuff yeah. so there's a lot of different things going on for us right now so yeah <laughs> all right you, you, you talked about a couple things you talked about your collaboration Mm-hmm. and doing another collaboration are you allowed to speak to that um and, and just not just you? yet all right we <laughs> can't just get a scoop. i was hoping for a scoop <laughs> not just yet <laughs> here's not here's the wonderful thing uh, and, and what's that jasmine i said hopefully soon not just yet <laughs> all right here's the wonderful thing and ashley you touched on this about you know the cider community and you now there's so many people in the community that want to help other people right yeah yes do you, I think that's refreshing. Yes. It is. A lot of people don't want to keep all those cards close to their vest. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think the most important thing that's recognized, at least to me, is the more everyone helps each other, mm-hmm. the more cider becomes more mainstream, the more cider yep. becomes that yep. beverage of yep. choice that it grows. Everybody grows. It's not competitive. Yep. Everybody. Yes. Right. And I think that mm-hmm. that's what we love about the cider industry. Like we yes, love right. the cider industry. We love the folks, everyone. Um, because right. I feel like we all have a, a goal to make cider mm-hmm. um, more of a, like right along with wine and beer, right? Not like under a second to it. No, we want it to be right up there with them. And um we just Jasmine and I, I guess just feel like not only do we want that for the whole industry, but we also want that for the black part of that. Right. So we yep. so we and like, again, like that is a completely untapped market. So it's like, right, let's bring on these folks to the cider industry as mm-hmm. a whole, because, right, we see everybody in the cider industry. Everyone's like they're all trying to get cider to be a prevalent like um, or popular drink. And yes, so are we, but not only just inside her, but also within our community. So I think, I think, and and I think that they recognize that and they're all, they're like, come on, <laughs> join us. So <laughs> I, I, they are, everyone is so helpful. So welcoming. Yes. It's, we could, I'm so glad that we're in this industry, honestly, mm-hmm. honestly, if we could, cause I've seen other industries and how things go and it's cutthroat, yeah, but it's very competitive, I, which is fine, great. but um, we appreciate that people don't gatekeep here. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great I can I steal that gatekeep? I've oh, not yeah. heard that before. That's that's <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah. gatekeeping. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love that. Yeah. Pardon the interruption. If you like what you hear, if you love what you're hearing, please share the podcast. Please take a screenshot of the podcast, post it on your social media, tag us. Just to let everybody else know about Fermented Adventure, the podcast, we'd be grateful for your help to grow our podcast. Jasmine, you mentioned events. Yes. I already asked for one scoop, didn't get that. So I'm going to ask, are there any events that you are allowed to share that you have coming up that uh, people can find you at? We have one that is further along in the planning process than the others. I'm not sure, actually, do we want to say? I mean, we're going to have a tasting in, um, well, we're, it's not necessarily a tasting, but it's going to be a collaborative event with another um, entrepreneur, woman from Philly, who mm-hmm. she does catering. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like we wanted to do, like she does catering, we have the cider. So we're going to do a joint event uh we actually just looked at looked at the space this week um so hopefully that'll be happening in may like at the end of may so um yeah that'll be it we're hoping to also include other people from the cider industry as well so we'll see how this goes Mm -hmm. um but yeah so that is the most recent one but we still do like our um smaller tastings Mm -hmm. where we gather up ciders and pasta and a few beers um and we do a guided tasting for uh just like a, up to like 10 to 15 people and we we like to do we, we like to have them themed so yes. i think the last one we had a galentine's one with our our girlfriends and then yes. we've done like a um a fall one a winter that was halloween um, we did a halloween one we did a halloween one right um so we try to do those things that we have like a tropical one at like last summer. Like, so we just try to do those things so that 
people can see, wow, look at all, like for every season, there's a cider, right? Yep. <laughs> For every, for every season, day of every, the week, right? Right, yes, for there everything, is. <laughs> there is a cider. Like, so that's what we've been doing consistently. So we have those and we decide like, all right, we're going to do this. So we have those. And then, but our biggest one so far that's coming up is this new um, joint, uh, I guess, event that we're doing with this uh, other entrepreneur. Yeah. I, I, I really, I've been so excited and I've, I, we met and I couldn't wait to continue this conversation. We were at the bottle share and mm-hmm. you know, she got a lot of people going around and, you know, glasses here and bottles there. And mm-hmm. you had a very popular table that night. I think you sold out, right? You, you, you didn't leave. We had a few left. bottles left, yeah, but bottles oh, left. when I went back, you said, no, we're out. So I don't know how that happened. Oh, really? <laughs> We might, oh, uh, you know, the table in the box still. Yeah, I think there might have been some in the in the uh, box. Now I know. Okay, yeah. no, because we, okay. I, I wanted to keep this conversation or or follow up on the conversation because you know it's like all right, we go to Chicago and mm-hmm. we meet the Cider Johns from Philly. Didn't mm-hmm. know you were here. I know. Mm-hmm. And, and now <laughs> and now it's like all right, great, another cidery, um, another. Uh, you know, somebody else that's promoting cider here in the Philadelphia area. Mm-hmm. And, and we spoke about it a little bit. There's a really strong cider community here yeah. in, in Philadelphia. Yeah. And it yeah. seems to be growing. My experience in Chicago, um, and we'll have right be on uh, as a next podcast, but oh, okay. when, when we were when we were down in Chicago, you had to travel a little bit outside of the center of town to get to these cider producers and right. There wasn't too many in town, but in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. literally hit four very close right. to center city yeah. and enjoy yeah. cider. Yeah. I mean, there's one five minutes away from my house. So, <laughs> so yeah, they are, that, that's what I said. They're definitely around. Um, and there is an interest here in Philadelphia for a cider. So mm-hmm. um, hence why there was a pour the core here um, yep. and why there are cideries here. So, yeah, I definitely feel like the cider community, um, again, like I said, at Cider Week, we have all the events and mm-hmm. everyone shows up for each other. I think yep. I think the cider community in Philly is definitely pretty strong. And yep. even from cideries from outside of Philadelphia um I think that there is support too so mm-hmm. I, again I love the cider community <laughs> I would love to see you know it's been too long for poor the core and I understand they're you know uh, everybody yeah. has to deal with their challenges but that to me yeah. and you know as it as it was the same experience that was a wonderful cider event it really yeah, was it yeah it uh, we've actually tried uh, they they just haven't been back to Philly. They they still do it. They were they up in New York, in New I think. York. Yeah, they were in they New had York. The one up in but Europe. um, yeah, they had the one in New York because we discussed maybe trying to go to that. Um, but mm-hmm. we were excited to see them like back doing the festivals again. And then, yeah, no Philly date. So we're hoping maybe possibly one day they'll come back to Philly so we can you know full circle fight close. <laughs> Right, but it would be great if they're back at the Navy Yard. Full circle. The Navy Yard was great. I am yeah. so waiting to go up to the Cider John's booth and have oh, your right. cider at Pour the Core. Listen, we cannot wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> you and I both cannot more, wait. more apples, please. <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> we cannot wait ourselves. Like, and we don't even like again, we don't want it to just be us pouring cider. Like we want it to be an experience yeah. like for cider, right? So um, if any way that we can make it, I don't know, fun, fresh, uh I think that we're definitely looking for all those ways. So mm-hmm. at least Jasmine and I, yeah, we are. When you are together and you're doing some of these planning sessions, these ideas that you have, yeah, what would you or where would you like to see the Cider Johns? Let's say it's 2023. Where would you like to be in 2025, 2026? 
Oh, I want us to have a cute little cidery. <laughs> yes, there's a few. There's a few things that we right. want to happen. That's there one are. That's one. We want our cidery. We also want to be mo- mobile. Mobile, yeah. Via uh, some sort of cart or something. Like I saw an air streamer uh, when I went out yesterday, and they were serving like beer and cocktails, and I was like, oh, that's also another way to. Right, because it's like um, you see beer and mm-hmm. wine, but rarely do you see cider on those too. Like, so on it's just like, oh, so right. So we do like more festivals, maybe do like corporate events, something like that. Um, we would like for our tastings to be more upscale. So, you know, if we could somehow manage to pull together like a dinner in Blanc-esque kind of event, but have cider be the focus, that would be amazing. Um I don't know. He's asking. So I'm just like, all right, thank you. Uh, so we're, I'm we're, trying to think. Do? <laughs> Listen, TV, the works, okay? Works. Right, yes. the works. We we were approached for uh to do, oh my God. participate in a TV show, like... <laughs> And I was on Jasmine like we can because she didn't want to do it. I was like, we cannot do this show. <laughs> but it got me to wondering. I'm like, but wait a second. If they're doing this for this, but that's what I told you. If they if they do, because- then we can. I feel like sometimes cider we we are giving ourselves the short end of the stick. Like we're not giving ourselves yeah. enough credit yeah. that all of what we can do with cider. So, right. It's like balls to the wall for me and jazz. We're like, oh, we're going to pitch TV shows. We want a mobile cidery. We want our our brick and mortar cidery. We want to do more things on like social media. Um, There's just so many. And then like events, too. Mm -hmm. We've talked about like a cider crawl here in Philly, like just certain like those things. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just you keep talking. I keep just getting like you, you keep amping up this whole energy experience. I want to do the cider crawl. Right. I want to do, I want to see you on TV. Right. I want to do the, the cider in Blanc. Um, right. I, I can't wait to go to your, we want to do it. And, and, and if it's like, we recognize that like, we may not be the ones to actually right. do it or anything like that, but we right. want that to be insider, uh, they, right? We want, we right, insider. That we would like to attend. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know so, what, I, I, I love that because that's, for Dawn and I, we have those ideas too. And yeah. you can only, I'm going to say this, you do can so only much. bite off so much of the apple right. at one time. Right. Right. And yeah. I, I think for where the both of you are, it's, Look, if you want to produce cider, it's about putting those, you know, bricks in place so that right. you can now have your production space, have a place where people can come and try right. and buy bottles mm-hmm. and all those things. Right. Because that was my experience. The both of you, I mean, to to meet with the both of you, having you pour cider, it's like, this is so much fun. You bring <laughs> your personality and you both have these two different personalities that really come together <laughs> and, and you know, if, if if you as you come you know and produce your cider do you have like um a philosophy on what your cider that you want it to be what that cider is going to be that people say oh that that's the cider johns that's that's their cider uh, i know initially we discussed that because we feel like in the cider industry, everything seems to lean towards the drier side. And we yes. came from um, the more sweet. And let's be honest, Black people like sweet. Um, <laughs> they like sweeter, um, I guess, like drinks, I guess. And then so from that, we're like, how do we draw in more Black people right. or people of color like into cider? And it's basically without doing them a disservice by just giving them sweet right so it's kind of like we would like for it to be semi-sweet semi-dry like somewhere in the middle start there right to start there in the middle right down to dry so (laughs) that is what we are trying to um that's what we're trying to establish here so it's just kind of like right we want a semi-sweet semi-dry but then also you know in the cider industry there's no real scale for dry sweet semi so it's that then you have to deal with that too so but we are just going to try to you know wing it with what we and I think that that's the whole part of it of us like trying to gauge and I think that's what we're trying to do with like these tastings too is try to gauge what we see 
our audience what they like. Mm-hmm. And and we definitely like when we take our um our sheets that from everyone's uh critiques and everything from the ciders oh, that they yeah. tasted, it's like we can <laughs> right so we can see what people are enjoying yep. and what they're not because this is our audience. So it's like we're taking this back and we're making a note of it for for when we are making our cider. So it's like, all right, Mm -hmm. we know people, right, are liking this more than that. So I think that that is what we're trying to, that that is our focus, honestly. Like we started with that idea, right? So that's still what we're doing, Mm -hmm. so. It really comes through to me that you're starting this, I'm I'm not going to say revolution, I'm going to say evolution. Mm -hmm. Because that you take the idea that, the w- within the black community as you spoke about the palate choice may be more sweeter yeah but as you introduce these semi sweet more towards dry mm-hmm. what happens is your palate becomes educated it it happens yes. look i'm going to it happened to it, us it, it's <laughs> it's the same thing for dawn and i sweet cider sweet wine yeah you know we we enjoy that it's it's just something that I think as I know, I, I think as genealogy, we become conditioned. We, we love things sweet. That's why they yeah. add all these additional sugars Sweeteners, to yeah. food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But as you start tasting these drier ciders mm-hmm. and the complexity and mm-hmm. you get the bitterness and the tannin and the, mm-hmm. s- the, 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 um, the tartness and the sourness, yes. it's I, 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 I equate things sometimes to a book. Right. Because yeah. mm. you can read a book and it's it's got the highs and lows and, you know, the thriller and the the the, the comedy. And that's what a really nice not to say that a sweet cider can't be those things. Right. But I think what you do be. is you blow out your 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 taste buds. And yeah. You don't get to pick up all those other no, listen, nuances. We've tasted some sweet ciders and we're like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and you know, and I think that that was the whole thing. Like where you see the name of it, you're like, oh, this is going to be great. And then you taste it and it's like. There is a crop of ciders where the flavors are very, very interesting. And then you taste it and it's like, well, that's not quite what I thought it was going to (laughs) be. Right. So, so, and, and right. We don't want people to like. And what's crazy is we've used some of those ciders at our tastings and people are like, "Mm mm-mm. So we know that like too sweet. Okay, not. too sweet. Right. No, no, no. Too we're not going to go that route. Um, so we're just trying to gauge. And I think that we have a pretty good idea of, I think that we, right, of where we want to start. I think that what we're trying to do is a good start for yeah. what we want to do, like for our community. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then also bring a little... I guess possess to the cider industry because a lot of people just do like dry ciders for the most part, right? So yeah. At least the craft ciders are dry. So we would, I guess, technically be considered a craft cider. So if we have a semi um sweet or even a sweet cider, I think that that would be kind of that's different. <laughs> that would be mm-hmm. kind of different. The beauty so. of cider is you can ferment with fruits. Yeah, you can barrel age. Mm-hmm. You can do so many different varietals and blends. You can do single yes. varietals. Mm-hmm. The 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 anything that you both come up with and have ideas for that you can put your own spin on it is just waiting for you to do. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. waiting. So you know, Ashley, do a little bit more of that. Take the jump because. Yes. <laughs> I really, I, I love the cider that, you know, the, the cider that you had, it was wonderful, but I think your personalities too, and your mission and your communication uh, of, of what you're looking to create is also what makes your cider enjoyable. It yeah. really is. Yeah. It's, yeah. there's, there's a lot of a story there. And, and that's what I, I we want it. to bring. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's what we want to bring to cider. All right. Next time we're going to enjoy cider together again. Yes. And 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 maybe it's one of those that you're not telling us about, but we can talk about it next time. Okay. <laughs> maybe. Why not? <laughs> Is there right. anything we haven't talked about today on the podcast? Anything about your journey that you want to share with the audience? Uh, did we miss anything? I think we hit mostly everything no just continue to yeah. look out for the cider drones we're also in talks with um the aca about possible um things for next year's cider, cider con. con so mm-hmm. 
We'll look out for that, hopefully, in the near in future. Portland. Absolutely. Yes, in Portland. Yes, yes we'll be in Portland. In Portland. <laughs> so you said look out for the Cider Johns. How do people find you? Um, you can uh, find us at the Cider Johns. That is T-H-E-C-I-D-E-R-J-A-W-N-S. And that is on Instagram, on Twitter, and on TikTok. And YouTube, because we're going to do that, too, as well. See, when I say we're going to throw everything. <laughs> no, there's everything. It's exploding. Right. It's wonderful. Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> yes. I love it. I am so grateful for your time today and Thank being you. able to speak with you and learn more and share your mission and desire about CIDR and the CIDR community. And I, I just love it. And I, I can't wait to, you know, the, the TV show and, you know, maybe in all the <laughs> bottles at the Oscar, you know, the the, 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 the right. grab bag at the Oscars, all those things. Um, Oprah's favorite things. Who the heck knows? <laughs> I feel like Jasmine has said that. Did she say it on TV? I, I, <laughs> I have very lofty dreams. I love it. Like, Please. Oh, how are, what, like, how are we going to do that? And I'm like, because we know. want I, that for everyone in right. Cider, honestly. Like, yeah, if not a true. someone, right? Right. So, somebody right. there's no right. reason why some somebody come on all right. right all right let's do it let's make it happen thank you so yes. much for being a friend of fermented thank adventure you. and of like course. i said next time we're gonna have cider in our hands and yes. i can't wait for this conversation to continue yes thank you That's for having crazy. us thank you so much <laughs> cheers cheers, cheers.